So this is the Josh we've been speaking about here on the left, who was an animator on that. So can we just give Josh a round for what he did? I loved your voice on that, bro. So good, bro. Next to, next to Dekelo in worship, bro. Absolutely. If Ezekiel tells you to get it down, you, you best know it was good. Uh, so good. So I'm going to introduce you guys, and uh, the idea is that we're going to really get pumped about God using us in our places and spaces to tell the good news about Jesus tonight. And it won't be too long, but I believe it's going to be impactful. And so here on my left is Josh. He's engaged to Jess. They're getting married next month. Come on now. And uh, we're going to ask Josh some questions about life and faith at the workplace. And Dekelo, you guys know, uh, she, you might know her as the superstar worship leader that she is, um, but you might not know that she's a boss in the workplace as well. Uh, and involved in as many industries as at least IT, finance, fine arts, performance, and more. Um, and she's got some things to share with us uh, about witnessing for Jesus in that space. And then Storm, if you have come to the five, you'll know that there's a little guy called Sebastian uh, who runs around over here. He's at the back now. And, and his lovely wife, Jess, as well. And uh, Storm's actually got a ministry for skateboarders, um, a super duper awesome massive ministry, and it blew up just from the simple thing of sharing the gospel of Jesus. And he's going to share with us about how to be bold, where we have fun, our sports places, whatever it might be, and, and, and serve Jesus in that space. And so I want to start out with Josh, because we just watched these movies, bro. Um, and obviously those are five short films they are going to be made into a feature um, but just tell us a little bit about what is the idea and the heart there, and what's the dream and aspiration with that project? So, uh, the directors of, of Young David, um, they had a vision, or he had a vision, his name is Phil Cunningham. He had a vision to make a movie alongside with Pixar, to, well, like on the same standard as Pixar, about the life of David, and that was 20 years ago. And that was on the River Zambezi where he was wow. looking at nature there. And he was just like thinking about David. And he was just like, some people think that like a God is this really hard character. But he just sees that through David's story, God's actually a beautiful artist himself. So he just wanted to convey that through um, David. Um, so this whole film was 20 years in the making, basically, wow. like of, of until it's now here. Next year, the film will be out. Um, but just on the vision of, of this, this is what he said, uh, da uh, Phil Cunningham, the director, he said, David, David's story has resonated with people from both within and outside the faith community for, uh, for millennia due to its ability to reach the broadest audience. Our vision is to make a movie and tell a story that will delight and inspire the broadest possible audience mm. while staying authentic to the Bible's account mm. of how one man's relationship with God liberated a nation and changed the course of history. Mm. So that's just really like the vision mm -hmm. that's behind this. Um, and although David's obviously the main character there, you kind of get that sense that like God's also the main character. He is. And he's, he's sort of there, but behind the scenes mm. uh, through it all. Sure. Mm. And it comes through strong. I mean, there were some, some touching moments there. They're not touching for any other reason that they, this is gospel truth. Mm. Um, and how was it for you to be a part of this project? And just tell us a bit about mm. that, because I know from your personal journey, yeah. it's, you had to fight for your faith in your previous place of work, and this is mm. kind of a dream come true for you, hey? So the, working for the studio, working on a project like this, is a testimony in itself, almost word for word, uh, that I prayed for years ago. Um, so in my previous place of work, the, the morals were not the same and it caused conflict um, and there was some tension involved. Um, and then I just, I just asked God, you know, like I've been trying to get into the studio for five years and I haven't been able to. And then that moment, it, like God had opened up each door like this. And it was, you know what? I know that I've been praying for, can I please just use the, the skills and the talents that I've learned and, tra like, and trained mm -hmm. for in animation, can I use that on a Bible-based project? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know it existed until now, and then there I get like the, 
double interview about saying, no, come work on us. We're making a film about David and we want you on in the exact same department that I'd been loving to, striving to get into, which was wow. the environment. And yeah, so it's just a testimony being on this film. Sure. And yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. You thought this was cool? The movie is looking so good. Amazing. So, so good. This is just a tease. This is just a tease, um, yeah. Bro, and just tell me a little bit about your conviction about faith in the workplace and sharing Jesus there. And I know your heart pumps for that. And just tell us a little bit about your heart for that. So, the, like, this was something that I struggled with um, because I'm, I'm not a, a person that likes conflict. So if, if we're going to have a conversation and values differ, morals differ, um, like, I'll just avoid that completely. But it kind of got to the point where I was too convicted to stay quiet. Sure. Um, and I've, I'll share verses with you guys later that God uh, put, put in my heart for that. And it kind of just led to the conclusion, well, you need to say something. Mm. Because this is, like, you need to represent Jesus here. Like, who's standing up for Jesus in, mm. in this space? Um, wow. Because if it's not you, then who? Sure. Uh, so I was kind of put into that situation and, yeah. Sure. Yeah, so I'll, I'll answer that question again a bit later, okay. but it's basically, yeah. Super cool, bro. And I'm just going to shift over to Dekelo, um, because representing Jesus in the workplace, not easy peasy putting in pie. But before we, you know, get onto that, just tell us a little bit about how you manage to work in such polar opposite industries in work and how God did that and what have you worked on and what are you working on now? Hello. Um, okay, for those context, for those who don't know me, I studied software development. So I've been working in the IT industry since 2009. So my role has gone on from being a developer, a data analyst, a risk analyst, a business analyst, a Power BI developer. Um, and now I'm a platform owner within um, Stanovank. I run a, t a cross-functional team that basically from developers, UX designers, business analysts, and we build chatbots for the bank. And then in my other life, I, um, I'm an actress, I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter. I have a production company with a friend of mine. And we've actually, on Wednesday, we recently uh, wrapped up a shoot for a movie that we were doing. Um, thank you. It was tough. Um, but we've done a couple of stuff. We did, uh, the, earlier this year, we shot a, a pilot called um, Burns and Song, which has done route, some routes to festivals. Um, so I've done a lot. Um, Sorry, what's the question that you were... Oh, just how did you possibly manage to be like cultural performer yeah. as well as IT, what, what, so slash, slash? I think for the longest time, I always knew I wanted to be a performer. That's what I want to do. But, you know, the performing industry is not always stable and you want to have a job and a stable income. And so I always kind of seesawed between the two of them. Um, and then on one moment, I'll ask God, please, please, please this. And then another moment, you know, that'll die down. And then the IT would open up. Mm. And God just gave me the peace. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Sure. In different season, one serves the other. In some season, one can just prosper more than the other. Um, and now it's more praying a prayer of like, God, give me capacity for both when the time sure. comes. Um, and God has just kind of shown me how, because I've always been running away from the IT, but then God has always rescued me with the IT <laughs> when financial situation comes. And he's just kind of opened my eyes to see how, how I can serve that industry wow. as well as the, the industry that I've been trying to run into, wow. um, but also not idolizing the industry that I've been trying to run yeah. into and just seeing how he's present in both. What does sure. it look like to be a servant in both? That is super profound because uh, that just means wherever we are, whatever industry that is, God can move because exactly. we are there. Um, I think that's super profound. But then again, it's not easy. Um, and so I wanted to ask you, what are some of the pressures that you've come up against trying to be a Christian in whatever workplace that might be in? How have you sought to fight that battle? So I think one of the things that I, you know, similar to Josh in terms of like when you think about witnessing to people, it is a bit scary. And I think my perception of like sharing the gospel was arriving with a Bible do you know the Lord, you know, um, and I guess I had, exactly, and I kind of had to, like, well, what would, it, what would I want to experience if I didn't know Christ in whatever space, whether it's in the entertainment space or the corporate space, and um, I remember hearing a, a, a quote from someone a little while ago saying that 
for some people, you are the only expression of Jesus they'll ever meet. That's right. And I had to kind of kind of relook at, well, how do I present myself? How do I show up in my spaces? Um, how do I show up when I have every right to be angry because you didn't deliver what you were supposed to deliver? Da, 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 and I have every right to be that, you know? And even in this past week alone, I, there were moments, things that happened, where I could have been that boss that was like, look, you didn't step up, da, 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 da. Um, And Holy Spirit speaks to me in sarcasm, and he's like, yeah, but Grace. Like, but God, but grace. Because <laughs> um, there are moments where I've needed grace, right? right? And both corporate and entertainment, same thing, you know, where um, how do you show up when, you, when you're entitled to be angry? How do you show up when someone needs forgiveness? How do you show up when um, you're the one that's wrong? Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, what would Jesus do, right. right? Is it more than just a little brand on your bracelet? But what would actually right. Jesus do if he was here? Um, and so I had to always, I have to always lean into Holy Spirit, mm. I don't know right now. So either you do something or I don't know. Um, and that's always ended up kind of working out and trusting in the mystery of um, just because you occupy a certain space doesn't mean you'll know everything about it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we need Jesus in those spaces. Sure. That's such a, a strong answer. We, we can all be encouraged by that. Leaning into the Holy Spirit, being a, a person of grace, uh, showing up. This is, this is all meaty stuff and not easy. Um, but another aspect to you that is profound is your love for, for God and your worship of Him. But that's not just Sunday. That's not just when you've got a mic in your hand and you're singing. That's a way of life, is to worship. And how do you bring the heart of worship to the workplace? One of the scriptures in the Bible, and I, I always forget the location, but I'll mm -hmm. always remember the paraphrase. Vaughn will it. Google for us in the front Thank row. You, um, but that scripture that speaks about the works of your hand being like worship to God. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, whether it's in the production space, whether I'm acting, whether I'm producing, casting people, or whether I'm in the meeting and we're doing a planning session and we're doing that, um, I have to do it to the, in a way that would be honoring to God. Um, that's even how I come prepared, sure. how I, you know, discipline people, how I, um, my, 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 what's it, the ex expressions that come out of me. Like, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, Jesus, and be like, you're blasphemy. Like, I remember chatting to God about, like, when something happens, I'm like, thank you, Jesus, you know? And people always think I'm blaspheming. I'm like, that is a prayer. So if I'm in a moment and things are going wrong and the Lord comes to me, I'm like, thank you, Lord Jesus. Come and on. people always think it's just like a, it's the expression that she's doing. And I'm like, nah, it's a prayer. So for me, I have to be intentional with my words, intentional with my attitude. Um, I'm very passionate about connecting people to people and people to their God-given purpose. Yo. Um, and so how I show up and how I mentor people without even trying to mentor, just in conversation, right. am I pointing them to a mind that's Christ-like, or sure. am I pointing them into a mind that's um, not Christ-like? Because in sure. both these spaces, I've often found myself in situations or conversations that easily sow division. Yeah, did you see so-and-so, and they did this, and da, da, da. you can get stuck in those kind of conversations for hours. Mm. Same thing on set. That happened literally in the last week. You get stuck in that conversation, and each time, God is like, God's always said to me, when you walk away from that, what was honoring to me sure. in that moment. So I have to be careful with how I show up with my mouth, with the things that I say, um, my attitude. Um, and so while I'm not coming with the big concordance Bible, yeah. I'd like to think that I'm leaving them with like something that'll point them to more of Jesus. Right. So good. So, so, so helpful and so, so good. You're doing discipleship one-on-one, uh, -on -one, the Jesus way, um, woman at the well vibes. You're doing that day on day. Um, just without the big, heavy Christian Christianese and the, and the Christian ways, but just leading them. I think that is super helpful. And then we're also going to hear from Stormy over here, um, because Storm, as you know, as I said, he's got a big ministry with the skateboarders. Uh, and uh, I wanted to know, where did, the, where did the penny drop? Where did the click happen? Where did the light bulb happen? I see our light bulb went off. Uh, we can switch it on if we want, but it works for my analogy. Uh, so... Oh, praise the Lord. It's, it's not just a saying, it's a prayer. Um, how, where did the light bulb click for you uh, in terms of like faith, my fun, these two have got to come together? Sure. Um, 
So when I started skateboarding, I uh, also came to know Jesus around the same time. It was when I was 14 years old. And uh, the deeper my passion for skateboarding grew, because I left the skate park to go to church every Sunday, um, the intimacy and that love for God grew. And uh, the more he started to change me, the more it became my passion to see that change in someone else. Sure. And, uh, and it wasn't always easy in skateboarding, um, but I always wanted to take that to my fellow brothers because that was my area that I spent most of my time mm -hmm. in. So why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and skateboarders, I mean, the culture of skateboarding is anarchism, it's, it's rebellion, it's that kind of a vibe. And like, did God, you know, you just like, let, let's represent, uh, let's represent Jesus saves. Um, and so just in terms of that, like, how does it actually work? Coming to a hostile environment like that, um, how does it work sharing your faith with skaters? What does that ministry even look like? Sure. Like, so you're doing a kickflip and you're like, Jesus saves. <laughs> like, what, how does this roll? The roll's a pun. Um, so a lot of it is relationship. It's friendship. Um, sure. Because, you know, I find that if we make people projects, it, they feel like projects. But if we take time to get to know them, then, then we invest in time and we see the value in their life. Um, and uh, so Cecilius does it in a number of ways. Um, that's in Ghana this year, and the previous one was in Nigeria. Um, but a lot of the time, so for, for instance, yesterday we hosted something called Continent Day. Continent Day is a day that all our skateboarders throughout Africa host a comp that reach skateboarders in Africa. We had 20 groups throughout Africa wow. hosting yesterday. So we could have reached between, if you say 100 at each event, 200 people. And each event starts differently. Um, some people have different resources. But for us, we did a braai. And uh, at the same time as the braai, we hosted a competition, which is something everybody can do. Um, and then when everybody's waiting for prize giving, that's where we deliver a message because they're all, they're all tired, so they're relaxed. And then I get to, to share the love of God with them. Wow. Um, the crazy part... Um, this week, though, is that we are, a lot of our guys in the Olympics, I don't know if you've guys seen the Olympics, skateboarding has now become part of the Olympics, so we've actually got two South Africans representing South Africa, which is really cool. Sure. And uh, they've actually reached out to CS to keep them in prayer. Wow. Um, but the sad part of it is, in our industry, there's a lot of people that have mental illness. And uh, we've actually lost someone this last week that was actually very good at skateboarding, but one amazing person. And we got to actually honor him throughout every continent day and wow. his family, and we got to pray with him, and we got to reach out. So as I said, it's, it's relationship. If we don't take time to actually invest in them as people, uh, we, miss, we miss the plot, and I think that's the way Jesus would do it. I want to ask another question on the Christian skaters of what God has done, but I also am thinking about the Kelo now, um, because you've also got a heart for hospitality, community, friendship. How does God use that design, that skill in you to help reach people with the gospel? Um, uh, I think, again, it comes to that, that phrase that I mentioned earlier, you're the only expression of Jesus some people will ever meet. Sure. Um, and just being intentional with relationship and not coming with an agenda um, and realizing that you were saved by grace. You weren't saved by an agenda. Sure. Um, and that whenever you see God, he's not seeking to... It, there's no... Uh, what's it? I don't know. I'm losing my words. There's no checklist. There's no checklist to it, right? At the, he, at the heart of it, he wants to connect with you. Yeah. And so I think for me... Um, that's what I always aim to do, just connecting with people at the heart of it. Like, it, Just because you don't walk away the way I want you to, I also have to trust that I don't do the saving. I don't do the saving. I am just a conduit. Um, if I was the one who did the saving, I wouldn't need God. Sure. And that's a scary place to even think about to be, to be in. So sure. I just have to trust that whoever God brings in my life, they bring, he brings them for a reason. Mm -hmm. And that, what is my purpose? What is my role in that? And, and leave it at that. And also being okay with that some people will come and stay and some people will come and go yeah. and not hanging on because, you know, you've done something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
Super, super good. I mean, and, and Stormy, like, so just sharing, just having personal relationship with people, that's how this ministry grew from the, from the, from the ground up. And can you just share with us some of the things God has done just through that? Sure. Um, so, yeah, we've, we started Skate Church a year ago, which is a... A, a year ago. A year ago. And now, and now how much has it exploded in one year? So we reached about 15 to 25 people every Sunday. Well, not every Sunday, every month in one Sunday of that month. Sure. Um, and we have actually looked at expanding. But the, the crazy part about it is this skate park that we hosted in was the skate park that... Um, previously Christian Skaters was called Sun, Sunskate. It was actually started. Sunskate was developed in this, in this um, skate park. And years later, we're talking 15, 16 years later, uh, we're now going back to that same skate park. Mm -hmm. um, and we now host Skate Church. And Skate Church is now looking for Gauteng. Uh, we're looking to do three skate churches on one Sunday, once a month. Because um, the, the whole thing with CS is to be connected to the local church, not to be separated. Mm -hmm. um, but, yo, there's some really cool, um, really cool testimonies. Can I share some testimonies? Go, 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 go. Um, if you look at some of the pictures, um, you'll see we get to do a gathering every year where we gather our leaders from all over Africa. I'm talking Ghana, Kenya, Nigeria, and so forth. Um, we are part of the Christian Surface um, Camp, which has been running for 50 years. They've reached every shore that you can surf on with the gospel, even North Korea, sure. Morocco this year. Um, and Morocco is a close country anyway. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. That's all good, um, bro. The, the, there was a skate church that no one arrived at except for one person. Me and Jess were there and this other guy, Joseph. And we spent the entire day with him, just loving him, sharing with him. And uh, later that year, he actually came to the gathering with us. Um, and he devoted his life to Christ sure. on that gathering, and he wanted to get baptized. And uh, you'll see the joy that he found was the joy of the Lord on that day. And it, it brings me to tears because, you know, who, who am I? Or who are we that God would use us? But that's the reason why he uses us. And, and there's, so many, there's so many cool testimonies I can share and you're more than welcome to ask me, but to get to do this is an absolute privilege. To share God's love is an absolute privilege. And to do it with a, a thing I do and I've been doing for 20 years, that's, a, that's something only God can do. Sure. I mean, another thing that sticks out to me, um, Storm, is like there would be people that are hostile to Christianity, that um, you've gone to those skate parks you guys have cleaned up the park. You guys have created a secure place for kids to skate. You've loved and made a, a good place there. And you've actually turned hearts of people that were anti-Christian to saying we can't run a skate park without the Christian skaters. Um, and the way that you love without agenda um, and you, you choose to rock up every day and love people mm. and share the gospel, but not without sharing the love of God with people for me is unbelievable. Um, and so I'm going to ask you, and then I'm going to ask Josh, just in closing. If you, here we've got a bunch of people, everyone in their own places, spaces, and relationships. They've got their own sphere of influence. Like, what would you say to all these guys here, and, and me included, about sharing the gospel? Especially in places like in your sports that you play, your friends, where you have fun. What would your counsel be to us about sharing the gospel? So... The first thing I want to say is that don't look at me like I'm something special. There's nothing in me that is not in you. Um, the day that you met Jesus' love is the day you should cherish for the rest of your life. That's something that should be the very motivation to share to someone else. It touched your life and changed your life dramatically. Um, and, and don't ever forget that point. Mm. And then... The, the, the next point I would say is you've got to understand that there are times where people will reject you. And it's not necessarily rejection. Sometimes it's a, it's a hidden seed that gets planted. But rejection is something that we face. Um, on one of the gatherings, actually the end of last year, um, we, had, we had gone to a, spe a special skate park 
And uh, one of the biggest photographers in the skateboarding industry was actually a Satanist. We invited him to pray with us, and uh, he said, no, I don't, I, I'm a Satanist, I don't want to do it. And anyway, we invited him. But long story short is, if we can't see the value that God sees in them, then we're wasting our time. And uh, so I would say deal with rejection. You're going you're gonna to face that. Um, but be bold and courageous mm. because he's, he's magnificent. Jesus is, is all I have. And, uh, and when you start to, to be bold and teach and, and share or however the Lord takes you and you start to see things happen, know that is him. Yeah. And if you, if you see things not happening, don't for a second think that God wasn't there. Know that he, he sowed a seed because that's his heart. He wants to reach all people, every place, any place, all the time. Wow. Amen. Amen to that, Storm. Thank you so much. And, and Joshi, last of all, like, you're such an evangelist. Um, I know you wouldn't brand yourself, you know, as if you're something special. But what would you say to us, just as a last charge, um, for us to share our faith boldly in Jesus? Um, well, uh, just be bold. <laughs> Don't be shy. If, if, if Jesus is your Savior and He saved you fully, then what do you have to be shy about? Um, it's really like He's going to be there for you. Um, and the verse that God convicted me about being in the workplace, and actually just in general, whenever I feel like my knees are shaking because this person is like, there's a golden opportunity to share the gospel, but it might be like a moment where I might get rejected or, or there might be some tension, yeah, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share the gospel. Um, this is the the verse that I want to read for us, it's, it's Mark chapter 8, verse 38. It says, Jesus speaking, For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and with the holy angels. So who am I in my own weakness, deny someone else a chance to hear the good news. Um, that's arrogant. Mm. So let me not do that. Let yourself not do that. Um, and also, if rejection comes, I just want to find another verse quickly, super quick. Uh, bear with me. If you are rejected, if you are People don't like you for what you have to say, for what you have to share. Jesus also said this in Matthew 5, verse 11 and 12. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So you can almost take joy if they reject you because you know that you're you are being blessed in that time but also like storm's testimonies if someone comes to know jesus then that's all the more reason to rejoice and really jesus is at the center of all of that it's him who saves it's him who 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 has us and yeah yeah there's really no failing there's really no failing in witnessing um and god is at work and he's using us, just our ordinary selves, filled with the Holy Spirit just naturally. Um, and so I'm going to ask you guys to stand. Lester's going to come and, and just pray for us. Did you want to say something? I did. Okay, wait. Did. <laughs> stand up. Dee's no. going to have the last say. <laughs> we'll say. I think also it doesn't have to look like what we think it's supposed to look like. God just wants our yes. Um, and you don't have to have a five-point sermon to reach someone. And sometimes it is as easy as God show me who and show me what to say. And he will honor that. 100%. Can we, once again, can we give it up for this amazing panel, man? These guys are amazing. Um, we're going to go into a moment of praying together. Can I ask us to scrum it? Could we do that? I love a good scrum. Could you find the person next to you? Uh, put your arm around them. I love it when the circle connect. We can connect it. Let's connect it. Let's not make it all weird. 
Can we connect the two rows? Yeah, there we go. Let's connect the two rows. Uh, not, not everyone's keen? Cool. Um, shout out. Um, I'm going to pray for us. Um, and I'd love for you to close your eyes for a second. And I just want to encourage us, in a moment like this, we might be sitting there think, or standing, thinking to ourselves, man, that's so cool, God. I, I, I so love how you're using those guys on stage. But God, it could never be me. But I want you to remind you that the family you're in, the workplace you're in, the community around you is all part of God's unique design. That God has so uniquely positioned you to be the salt and the light of the world. That God is not going to use anyone else because he's positioned you there for such a time as this. I know that these may seem like Christian buzzwords. but no, these, these, are, these are truths that God is calling us to today. So I don't want you to walk out this space today believing the lie that you're not good enough. That you've got a story of how you've trusted God. You've got challenges that you're still hoping and believing him. That's all that God is using and molding you. How do we overcome the evil one? By the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. There's so much power and there's so much truth in your testimony. So never discount yourself because God has never done that to you. So let's pray together. Father God, I thank you so much for, God, firstly, you want to honor the people on stage today, God, just to see them step out in faith and just to see how you are drawing people to yourself. Thank you, God, that you've never stopped being in the business of calling people home. And if, God, if you're not done with that, then we've still got a mission. We've still got a call. And, God, here we are as your people. God, we want to be counted as those would be sent out. God, we don't want to be people that just consume and consistently hear over and over again how good you are. But we want to be people that are filled up by your goodness. But we want to be people that dispense your love, your grace, and your mercy to those around us. God, you've put us in unique spaces You've placed us in unique relationships. And God, like our vision for the year, God, we want to tell the world about your goodness. God, may we never become complacent to that, God. May we never be too busy for that. God, would you rock our agendas? God, would you step in the way? God, would you lead us? Holy Spirit, what a beautiful gift you are to us. Thank you that when we don't have the words, that you'll empower us. When we don't feel like it, God, thank you that we have everything that we need in you. So God, I pray for everyone in this room, God. I pray for divine, favorable opportunities this week. That God, you would show us opportunities to love people, to share who you are, to dispense your mercy and your kindness. God, may it be for your glory. May it be for your good. God, we don't want to see spaces filled up. We want to see heaven populated for your kingdom, God. So here we are, Lord. Send us for the, your glory and for the good of all those around us. We pray these things in the powerful, matchless name that is Jesus. And everyone said. Amen. One more time with a little bit more gusto. Everyone said. Amen.